I mean, I kind of want to have kids. With I you know. Now. I want to have kids with <laughs> you yeah. too. Yeah, let's have kids with her. <laughs> if it was a commune situation. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing okay. Yeah. It's a nice rainy day. Yeah. You just had a little nap. I did. I don't know how you do that. Like, I'll be, like, moving, moving things around, like, making noise, and you just sleep right through it. Oh, I've slept through bombs. I'm so envious of that ability. Okay, well, today is caller day. We're joined by a lovely caller named C, as in the letter. I thought you'd like that. As opposed to the name. Yes, as opposed to the name. There are some Cs. CeeLo Green. That's the only one. That's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) C, thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Also, I'm pretty sure you came in sort of last minute. So, yes. Super last minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. But no, no, I'm so grateful. Yeah, it was. I'm a little intimidated, but I'm very excited. Do not be. Nothing to be intimidated yeah, about. Yeah, definitely not. And actually, if I'm if I'm totally honest, when I reviewed your email, I was secretly happy that this worked out because I remember your issue was time sensitive. So, it is time sensitive, yes. <laughs> so could you give us your age, the age of the person in question, because I know there was one, and your region and your story, please. Yes, so I am in the upper West Coast area. That's not on the, it's, I'm in Idaho. Okay. I moved about two years ago. Um, I'm 29 years old, my boyfriend, the person in question is also 29. Uh, he's a handful of months older than me. So we've been together for a month and a half, and that is very little. Um, but I, like in my email, I mentioned like I didn't really believe in like the one or like, you know, like knowing when, like when you know, you know. Uh, and ever since our first date, I it's really been just, yeah, when you, when you know, you know, I have been in a seven year relationship in the past. Um, he has as well, which is kind of crazy. We're both from California as well. So we have a lot of similarities. There's, uh, just a great connection. Our values are really spot on our life goals. We both really want to travel. I have a younger sister. Um, and she, I moved here to be closer to them after my breakup, um, with the ex of seven years. And, He also moved from a breakup, but he moved in like January. We've talked a lot about how natural, like organic, the chemistry, like we are, he said, I love you. I said, I love you back. It's been a month and a half. I know, crazy. It's like, it's not, (laughs) it's very not me. Like, Uh I uh, I have been you. See, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and also like, and I've dated since my last relationship a lot. Like I'm known at like, like, just my friends know I'm like, I, I like to date. It's fun. I'm not ever looking for like, I wasn't looking for like settling down or anything like that. And he wasn't either. We talked about that on our first date. We were like, let's see what happens. But he asked me my intentions and I was like, "Ah, I'm just here. Like I'm just Mm -hmm. taking it as it comes. Yeah. Yeah, And he was the same way. So it's, uh, again, like just such a, like, it feels so special. And we've talked about that a lot. Um, and just like, weird and yeah it's unlikely (laughs) yeah I'm like blushing it's it's no it's really sweet I know know, uh yeah but anyways um, enjoy it it's such a magical time I yeah and I I have so so yes back to the the question that I'm getting to um so he currently lives with his family because he he moved again like early this year um and I live, my roommate just moved out. I'm in a house right now. It's two bedroom. It's a great space. And like, um, I'm like, I'm a freelance writer, which is great. Amazing. Mm, nice. but, you know, uh, and I also like surf. Like there's, you know. Um, you surf in Idaho? I surf? Oh, I thought you said you surf. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> but. It did I sound like she said I surf. It did sound like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm nervous. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Take a deep breath. No surfing. No surfing in Idaho. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it'd be a really good opportunity. He's here like four four nights a week to like maybe it's, I know it's super soon. I get it. Um, but to like 
maybe have him apply to move in. It'd be month to month. So if anything did happen, you know, like it's not, it's not like we can get out of it, but he's just here all the time. He cooks for me. He spends a night. Hmm. I know it's crazy. So, no. so the question yeah. is, the question is, is, is it too soon to have yeah. him move in? Are we totally insane? Yes. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're definitely not totally insane. I will say that it, we moved in, what, 10 days in? No, two and a half weeks. However, there was a piece to this, which is that I was living out of a suitcase. I don't know if you know this part of our story, but I'll, I'll link it here. Maybe I think it's in the proposal story. Mm. <laughs> I hope so. (laughs) But uh, basically, I was moving from one sublet to another. And the other sublet was, I think it was in Bed-Stuy or something. It was like deep in Brooklyn. And we wanted to get as much of each other as possible. And so there was a time limit to how long I would be living with you because it was just until my contract was up. But I Mm. never ended up moving out, really. I guess this is our way of saying, I am sure that you are hearing from some people in your life that it's too soon. You could be ruining a great thing. Are you, Oh, is, has this happened or not so much? No, people have oh, really, been, yeah, they've been really encouraging. I just think like, that's not how I operate mm-hmm. usually. Me, and me neither. So, yeah. And he, he got me like tickets to a basketball game, even though he hates my team and like, we're going to Portland in December for it, which is very sweet. Um, but I'm just really not like, I just, it's so soon. And it doesn't like, matter. It doesn't matter. I wasn't at all. I didn't, I didn't even, my prior girlfriends didn't live with me and I dated them for two years. Mm. So that's yeah. not an issue at all. It's when you meet the right person, you suddenly become the moving in type. Um, yeah. Have you, first of all, it's month to month, this lease, right? So this is a very, this is a low risk situation, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> and have you had a fight with him yet? We've we've had a couple misunderstandings, not fights though. Like okay. I cried once. Hmm. We've like I mean I uh, it just it was like a it was a misunderstanding. He's like a sensory guy, and I just thought maybe I have some like relationship trauma that I'm also working through. Again, it's two years behind me. We haven't had a fight though. Okay, have you found anything he does annoying? <laughs> yes. That's a big question. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Well, not in a bad way, though. I think it's cute, but I know it's annoying. Like, to, <laughs> to a practical Annoying mind. in a good way. <laughs> but, like, hmm. it's, I, I'm like, it's so stupid, but, like, it's, it's cute. Um, I mean, I just also, like, we've both been in long-term things. Like, he's been in a seven-year, I've been in, which I think is, like, we've talked about it just being really good, knowing, like, commitment and also just just life happens and like a long-term relationship i learned a lot i think he did too from his i think that's really like it's a nice compatibility thing it's not like so would you say he's on the same page as you in all this yeah yeah so he wants to move in if you're if you'll have him that kind of thing so we broached the topic like a couple weeks who broached the topic uh well i was saying my roommate was moving out and he was saying Maybe I can move in. It's soon. And I was like, it's really soon. And then like. Oh, so he actually like. like you did, did you did you tacitly offer? Was that what no, your intention no. was? You were just saying, oh, my roommate's well, moving out. It was just, like, like, just so happens. The stuff was moving. It was kind of a dramatic situation. So it okay. was like. So you were just giving him the news. Yeah. Yeah. And then he took that opportunity to say, oh, I can move in. Yeah. And then he was like, maybe it's too soon. And I was like, it's probably too soon. What's his situation living again? Just remind me. He's living with his parents right now or his, his family. And does he have like, does he work? Does he have a job? Yeah, he, or- he has a job and he pays rent at his parents, which is $200 less than I pay. Okay. And would the financial arrangement be that you guys would split the rent? Yeah. Okay. So you've, you've talked about that. Well, he would be renting a room because I have two rooms. So I'd be renting mine still. Okay. And he- Renting from the same people. Oh, so he'd actually have a separate lease. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. So oh, that's super convenient, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, because I also like, I write, right? And I also, I do like my alone time. I haven't like gotten sick of him ever. And we spent many days 
you know, um, together in a row, but, um, or like no breaks, I guess, Uh, but like that's such a good opportunity. Yeah. This is so clear cut to me. Yeah. Wait, do you like the same food? (laughs) We do. He he likes to cook. I, I like to cook. All right. Well, okay. then move in together. Yeah, I think this is such a no brainer. Like it's yeah. really low pressure. If it doesn't work out, then you just find a new roommate. He moves back in with his parents. But what this is going to do is just sort of make you realize sooner than later whether or not this is going to work. And mm-hmm. usually the moving in situation, sure, it happens after way more time. But it's also like you lose way more time in getting to that point. Like this is going to be trial by fire. You are living under the same roof and you may, you will realize very quickly whether this is what you think it is or not. And I think it's incorrect when people say that moving in too soon can ruin it. I think that you're just getting to the same conclusion faster personally, just based on having the experiences I've had with relationships, sometimes moving in, too, you know, quote unquote, too soon, that all that did was save me time in the long run, if I'm totally honest. And with Andy, I I had friends say, I think you're making a mistake. It's way too soon. You could be ruining a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. We got some good. I told you so. Unfortunately, (laughs) you don't get to have an, I told you so, but your friends are so nice. (laughs) Everyone's so supportive. It, It is nice, but I'm also like, I don't know. I, and I, you're, you're completely right. I mean, I agree. I guess I was thinking like, I think this, like we, we've talked about it together with like, this could be it. This feels just like different than anything else I've ever. It's it's like, it's again, it's like, I get a little um, like moon eyed about it. Um, but, and he does too, which is really nice. I just, I guess it's nerve wracking. Like this could be it. And like, I just, you know, like, I, Yeah. I just, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, Yeah. now go for it. The big risk is that what you do is you cut short this magical, you know, courting honeymoon stage. You are going to cut that a little short too, that yearning for each other in between dates, that sort of thing. But, 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 you know, you need a roommate. The cookie doesn't always crumble in the exact way you want it to timing wise. You look like you want to say something. Wait. This is the cookie always, the cookie crumbling is always bad though. No, the cookie crumbling is just like it crumbles in good and bad ways. Oh, I always assume cookie crumbling is always a bad thing. Really? Yeah. I thought it's just like the outcome, you know, sometimes it crumbles well and sometimes it doesn't. Do you think See, a cookie you crumbling think? is ever good? I think it's uh, I think I, she's right. I think she's yeah. right. I think I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll accept that. It doesn't matter. The honeymoon period, even if it lasted a couple more months if you didn't move in it's artificial like what's going to happen is you're going to move in and you're going to find out if this is real Mm -hmm. faster why not what's the what's the risk is what you're sacrificing maybe a couple months of kind of feeling a little more freewheeling in the relationship who cares (laughs) we've been putting a lot together i mean like we've been staying in a Mm -hmm. lot so you're basically living together already you're not it's not that different i generally disagree with the notion that in the early stages when it's right, that there's some wrong move, like a wrong chess move that can be made short of like cheating or lying or just being someone you're not, you know, there's fair enough. Like you don't necessarily know all the sides of him. You're basically dating his representative still. It's a month and a half yeah, in. The warranty. Six the six month warranty. The six I month warranty. Ah, <laughs> yes. A good shanty. Very good. Very good. Studious shanty. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But assuming this is what you think it is, I just don't think a wrong move can be made. For, for it to come down to something like that, then that just cheapens the entire connection. Yeah. It's like, oh, we moved in too fast. This then happened. Then this then happened. It's like, it was never meant to be, yeah. ever. So and I think you can call this a shandy stamp of approval. Absolutely. And it's month to month. Yeah. Right. That was, yeah, no, I, I yeah. that was also like, I mean, yeah, I, I guess. And what you were saying, Charlene, I have told my friends, like, I feel like it's kind of like, I can't really jinx it. Like if it happens, it's going to work out. If like, I, I've talked about it a lot since our first date, I was like, 
holy crap like I you know like it was <laughs> yeah it was great uh it's so cute whenever you talk about it yeah, you, you get, get really super like, tongue-tied and really you start blushing yeah. it's really cute you know, it's we really don't really often get callers in this oh, state no. she's she's in love you're you've got it you got the sickness <laughs> yeah I do. but like even like we went to a, a dj on our like second date and there were like photographs taken and he took a screenshot of like a, a video of it's me looking at him and there's like hearts in my eye. Like you can see. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. It's, it's oh, great. It's so no, nice. Yeah. Look, just go with it. Love, love it. Real true love always, it works out. Whatever choices you make. If you're in like, then things can get really effed up. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you are in, you're in love. Like we've had, this may be the most in love Shandy I've ever seen on a caller. Yeah. And look, someone might get hurt. It might not be what they think, but what sure. a learning experience. And you only live once and the timing is right. Yeah. It's not that high stakes. No. If I'm honest, he's going to be saving money moving in. You have a separate bedroom in case one of you snores. Yeah. Oh, You've already, tremendous. you already spent four to five days. You know a what? Week I, anyway. I'm going like, to go as far as saying this doesn't even count as moving in. <laughs> the holidays were made for cuddling. So cuddle the cozy earth way. <laughs> Andy, that jingle was exceptional mm. and perfectly accurate for how one should celebrate the holidays and the perfect way to go about it, which is the cozy earth cuddle blanket. Look at how cozy you look. You know what this is? This is the closest thing you can get to feeling like a bear. It's got the weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually the weight, we can't just let that slip by. Weighted blankets are a thing. I mean, that's an entire industry is weighted blankets. Everyone knows those faux fur blankets that are just like fluff. Oh. This has the substance. And when it's on top of you at night, it feels like a hug. There's not any part of this. This doesn't feel as good as the other parts. This has an incubator like warmth. <laughs> incubator. -like. I'm in the womb. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> You're like, do I have to engage in this ad? Mm. Can, can, you, can, can I? Can't you do can, the talking yeah. for me? <laughs> if you finish this ad and you let me sleep, I'll give you a reward later. <laughs> And as an added bonus, it looks nice. That's the thing I have with some weighted blankets is that they look kind of like not real blankets. They look kind of weird. I don't know. They just don't look cute. They're not decorative. I love how this looks strewn across our bed. Mm -hmm. It's a style choice as well as a functional one. I'm going to do the rest of this in ASMR. Plus, it's a really good size. It's really generously sized and a great gift. It's that time. Rediscover what it means to be truly cozy with a cuddle blanket. <laughs> So hurry, you can save 40% off the cuddle blanket right now. This introductory offer won't last. So go to CozyEarth.com and enter our promo code Shandy at checkout to save 40%. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code Shandy. <laughs> I don't know you very well, but I can already tell that you don't let yourself get to this place very easily. No. It takes a lot for you to get to this place. I trust that this is what you think it is, or at least what you think it is for now. Like it, maybe it, it isn't your forever relationship, but that doesn't make it less valid currently for where you are in your life. I think that's, that's a big mistake people make. It's like, if it's not my forever, if I'm not going to die next to them, then waste of time. It's like, this is going to teach you something, whether you die next to each other or you yeah. don't, you know, it's so, also going to hasten the the realization, whether this yes. is it or not. Why waste three months having like a fake honeymoon period? See, Just get to it. This is a no brainer. Yeah. And, and you know, are you guys ready to get married, both of you? Like, have you talked about, not like, you know, not like you've pounded the table already. I'm just saying, are you both in the mindset where if you were to get married, you could do that? Do you think? Yeah. Okay. We, we've talked about it. We've also talked about like, I really, if I have, like, I don't know if I want kids. And if I do, it's, I'm 29. I'd like to wait a sure. handful of years. Hmm. He's the same way. We've sure. talked about. Great. Um, like, yeah. Weddings. Like, again, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. The fact that they're both 29. Yeah. If you were both 22, I don't know if we'd be giving the same advice, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. It would be a little uh, different a for me, but there. 29, Easy. you've both had seven year long relationships. Easy. You've gone off and lived in LA. Like you've done things. Yeah. You mm -hmm. are prepared for this. You are both consenting adults. Yeah. This is honestly like, I, we're, I, I, I think we're I done. think <laughs> that when most Shandies are on these caller sessions yeah. they know the answer to the question they're asking they just want to hear someone else tell them the answer they know and i think you basically just called in to hear the answer that did you, you know did which you? Is, i'm not blaming you i'm just saying i think you did <laughs> she's shaking no, her head i thought it was the complete opposite really I thought, like, 
No way. Really? Six, what? One hundred percent. I you don't to, know us. I talked to. Well, <laughs> excuse How, me. I'm so been sorry. A panda. I mean, I don't know you, but you know, like parasocially. Yeah, no, parasocially, <laughs> definitely. I thought you guys were going to be like, whoa, wow. whoa, whoa, whoa. why? What? Well, why would we say? Why would we say not? Don't move in. What was the? What's the reason? It's just so early. No, doesn't matter. You guys are in love. If you were like, yeah, he's nice. You know, we like the same movies, and I don't know. Then maybe we'd be like, okay, let's let's have a little more time. Yeah. But you guys are in love. It's obvious. Yeah. You know so. that we're big, like, love people, right? I know, I know that. <laughs> like, we're kind of romantics. Half yeah. of the reason I listen, yeah. Yeah, I love, uh, yeah, you You guys have great, like, banter. And, yeah, and I just, I feel like, yeah. It's, I mean, he's he's great. See, he's a, uh, I'm, uh, I, easy. I want, like. It's easy. It's, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that didn't deserve a uh, laugh. Sorry. I know where you are right now. The blushing, this, the, like she's stumbling over words. It's oh, there. a like, magical I- time. No, enjoy, enjoy. Like I want everyone listening to just hear this and feel it. It's so fleeting. Yeah. You know, even right. if this is a forever partnership, it will not be like this ever again. Trust me. Yeah. Absolutely. This, let me ask you a question. If we had said, don't move in with him, that's crazy. Would you have not moved in with him? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I think it's just like my practical mind. Like I just looking at it on paper is really, I'm like, oh, wow, this is crazy soon. It's, you know, um, but I probably would still talk to him about it. Yeah. I mean, right. I trust Good. you guys though. I do. I value both of your opinions so much. I like the way you're apologizing for theoretically disobeying our advice. <laughs> That's that's good shandy material. Yeah, <laughs> you can't logic your way in and out of some decisions. No. This is sure logically, like probably no, no, but there's nothing logical about love. No, sometimes in a bad way, but you know, and sometimes in a good way. This could be a hell of a lot less convenient than it is. So enjoy. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, as, as Woody Allen, I know Woody Allen's now canceled, but I can still quote him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, love is like a shark. A shark's got to keep moving forward or it dies. And that's exactly what this is. This is a shark. Don't let it die. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. see, thank you so much for calling. I mean, this was the easiest call ever. This is so easy. <laughs> I love a black and white question. Yeah. It's a vacation for our brains. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bye. Thanks. Have a great Bye. night. Ah, I love a black and white question. Uh, Although I'm sure there's going to be people who do not agree with us. What's their reasoning? Well, they're just going to say, oh, don't move in that early. doesn't matter what the situation. That's just not good reasoning. The only reason why she shouldn't move in with him is if she doesn't know him well enough. Like she doesn't trust him. Like there's, you know, maybe he's not who he says he is. But he could also keep that charade up for a long time anyway, whether you know what I mean? Like, as long as she feels safe with him, then this is a no brainer. It's a total no brainer. And he's got his own room and he has a separate lease agreement. It's like, come on, this Mm -hmm. is easy. And if it doesn't work out, he moves back in with his parents. Yeah. I, I love how he's saving money. His parents money. are like, wait, what? I, I think it's funny that he's saving money by moving in. Yeah, I don't... Like, what's... his parents are ripping him off. <laughs> yeah, why would you live... Like, I don't understand. I understand living with your parents to, like, not pay rent, but he's 29 and he's like, no, parents are a much better deal than lower rent. I think people live with their parents much later these days. It makes total sense. Do you know how much it costs to rent nowadays and how... How no, rare but, it is that he, you get. He's, he's like, he could get cheaper rent outside of his parents. Oh, I get the impression that he, he moved back recently after his big breakup. Oh, and so it's like an in-between thing. Yeah. It's like a shelter. Yeah. He's I sheltering actually, in place. I think it's sweet that he moved into his oh, parents. Oh, I got it. No, actually, I Assuming do too. That he has I forgot good, about that detail. You're right. Assuming he has sweet. a good relationship with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's now sweet. Anyway, total no-brainer. I don't even have anything to add. No, that's easy. Come on. I'm actually jealous. I mean, not jealous because I have you, but I'm saying I'm no, jealous I'm about totally that time jealous. of life. I'm one. I was looking at her like blushing and yeah. like stumbling I mean, over her words. She, I was like, oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. that. You can't get time. you can't bottle that. If you could bottle that, you would be the world's richest person. Yeah. She was giving away the answer the second she started talking. You just she knew. She was. Yeah. She's in love. She's in love. A it's month easy. and a half in when you know, you know. OK, I think we can wrap. Easiest call ever. Yes. 
All right, Andy, we are now joined by another caller. And this caller is quite far. Very far. Yes. As far as you could probably get. True. And probably the, f- the farthest away of any caller we've ever had. I think so. Yes. We are now joined by Hannah. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Hi. <laughs> so would you like to reveal where you are calling from? I am calling from Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. So it is the furthest away you could get. If you go any further, you start coming back around. Wow. Wow. (laughs) We made it. Shandy made it to the other side of the planet. The interwebs. Amazing. You know, it giveth and taketh. How cool is this? Unbelievable. There's not, it's like you're sitting in our kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) It's magic. So Hannah in Kyrgyzstan, to me, I don't think of people in Kyrgyzstan named Hannah. I'm not from here. I'm from okay. Denver. So That's it, what it kind of does away with the exoticism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you mind, Hannah in Kyrgyzstan, telling us your age, the age of anyone in question? I don't believe, but I could be wrong. And your story, please. And maybe a little backstory is, you know, why you're in Kyrgyzstan. You, you could include that if you want. We wouldn't turn sure. it down. Yeah, I would like sure. to. Sure. Uh, I am... 34 for another week. I wrote 35 in my email because I didn't expect to hear back so quickly. Um, The initial person in question is my most recent ex who is 33, but there are other people also incorporated in this query that are in their early mid thirties. I have been living in Kyrgyzstan for the last approximately three years and uh, studying languages. I have a refugee nonprofit I run out here, um, which opened last year. But uh, my query is mostly based on the relationship that I also started when I was here about two and a half years ago, uh, which ended a few weeks ago. And the reason that it ended being something of a through line in all of my prior relationships (laughs) prompted me to write in uh, to see whether or not I'm the common denominator. Mm -hmm. And if you have any advice for me going forward. Oh my goodness, so well spoken. Yeah. What a command of the language. <laughs> it's Impressive. like you you maxed out in English. You're like, I have to study something else. Yeah. Some <laughs> There's nothing left for me here. <laughs> yeah. There's a okay. lot more words in Russian and Kyrgyz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's let's hear what's been going on. Uh so my question generally is about the fact that all of my relationships, while of course having kind of myriad factors that lead to them not working out long-term. My shortest relationship was this one, two and a half years. Um, They've made it three years, four years, four and a half uh, before eventually tanking because my partner uh, discovers that I'm serious about being child-free, which Mm -hmm. is a choice that I have made very deliberately based on a number of factors. And I express it very confidently uh, Mm -hmm. on first dates and throughout relationships. So it's something people know about me before we engage in anything committed. And yet it seems to be sort of a shock to one man (laughs) after another that I mean it. (laughs) Um, So they think they can, they think they can convert you or that she's she's going to hit me. Yes. Yes. And that has generally been the line that comes up in each breakup is either uh, I didn't know you were serious, or <sighs> I thought you just meant you didn't want kids with the people you had been with before, um, or that's just something women say before the biological clock starts ticking, or some mm. other kind of iteration okay. of like, <sighs> I didn't believe you when you <sighs> told me the truth about yourself. I was irked. I'm uh, irked. Uh, okay, so I assume this happened most recently. Mm-hmm. It ended two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. So again, uh, we, we were friends for probably six months before we started dating. Uh, and I'm very vocal about this commitment and also the reasoning, um, behind it. So when he essentially ended things for a number of logistical reasons, we're both from different countries. Neither of us are from Kyrgyzstan and he was preparing to move home. He, essentially said, I would invite you home with me and we could try there in my country if you were willing to have children, to which I said, you know, I'm not. And he said, okay, well, my goal is to start a family. And I said, 
okay. Oh, <laughs> In that case, I guess you can go. But why have we been spending all this time together for two and a half years yeah. when uh, I have articulated my lack of that same goal? So th- th- this is ridiculous. Yeah. I Okay. Because I want to just force you to distill down to one question. If I had to distill it down to one question, because this is the third or fourth time this has happened in a committed relationship. I wonder if uh, the thing that needs to be different in the future is me. And Mm -hmm. if uh, the common denominator is my behavior and my inability to screen appropriately or uh, weed out the kinds of people who will not take me seriously and essentially how I can avoid this happening in the future by finding a man who will Uh, Believe me when I tell the truth about myself. Mm. That's upsetting, isn't it? I I have a question. So, so generally, what has the response been? In the you said on the first date, you'll be like, "By the way, I'm child free by choice. Never Mm -hmm. changing my mind about that." Mm -hmm. What do they say? So, I mean, here might be my first stumbling block. Nobody has also said, "Oh, good, me too." Um, Ah. But I've I've never met anybody who has said that. Of of either so, sex. So so what so do they say? They typically say, "Oh, that's really interesting." You know, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Mm-hmm. I tell them. They say, "That's very well reasoned." I really haven't thought about it that much. I think it's just presumed to be the default. And I like you. I think it'd be interesting to see where this goes. I'm not really committed one way or the other. And if it goes well, <sighs> and then fast forward, a family could two. be two people. Fast forward to two or three years later and they say, oh, I wanted to the whole time. I just didn't think that you would keep going out with me. So, no, which I wouldn't have. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I mean, you could make a more informed decision if you knew mm -hmm. that's deep down what they wanted. And I mean, not never having thought about it. I do unfortunately feel like you might need to be a little, you might have to have a bit of a stronger grip early on Mm -hmm. in that, like, have you thought about it? Maybe you should think about it because I'm not going to change my mind. I I almost feel silly telling you this because I think it's obvious that you would do this moving forward based on Mm -hmm. just a couple minutes talking with you. You were about to say something. No, I I was going to say something along the same lines. Mm -hmm. I just think you should make it extremely black and white. Like, mm-hmm. be like, I just want you to know I've been in relationships where I've told them up front this and then they wanted kids and we ended the relationship. Like, I need you to understand this is 100 percent never going to change. You're not going to like love me into having your children. Mm-hmm. Nothing is going to ever change. I am not having kids. Is that cool? Is that always going to be cool with you? Tell me now. <laughs> or at least dinner. tell me in these first couple of months of dating, I think, because mm-hmm. I, I understand that maybe some people haven't. I, and I, I'm going to be honest, men in their early 30s, it, I don't find it super surprising that they're like, oh, I haven't really thought about it. It's, it's a sort of general assumption that that's what you do. You probably yeah. will do it, but you're not sure. It'll hit you one day, you know, all that stuff. And I, it sounds like they're even projecting that onto you because mm-hmm. they're not sure. They're, they assume you also... Which yeah. is really frustrating. It almost feels like you're, I don't want to say ahead of your time, but I really <laughs> do believe that things are starting to shift in this direction where someone, yeah. especially a woman in her mid thirties can say this and it not be mm-hmm. met with a bunch of like eyebrow yeah. raises and mm-hmm. disbelief. But you're at the, you know, you're at the forefront of, of a generation that's shifting. And Unfortunately, I think that, you know, part of the joys that come with that is, is, is this, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're not believe you're telling people who you are and what you believe and what you want and what you don't want. And they don't believe you because they've been indoctrinated with a belief. I think it also (laughs) might be the age. Like when you were like in your early to mid twenties, I think guys thought there was more growth to be had. Like they're like, oh, Mm -hmm. she's so young. I mean, I don't know if guys that age also think I mean, maybe they don't realize how young they are, but I think there was the thought that you'd grow into wanting kids. Mm-hmm. There was so much time. But as you get older, I think it's not, not saying you're getting, you're very young, but I'm saying as you <laughs> increase the number of years you've been on earth, I think mm. guys will take you more seriously, but I don't know if I you, agree. you know, I don't know if that's the strategy is just to wait around. I think you're just probably very lovable. 
Like, I think these guys are just like, I, I yeah. have to have a kid with this, this woman. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it like this. Yeah. I've been told that <laughs> I've been told I have big mom energy. And now that I'm <sighs> about to be 35 and feeling like I might swing back around after all the divorces, I'm like, maybe what you're reading is like big stepmom energy. <laughs> <laughs> B- BSME? That doesn't oh God. sound good. <laughs> no. Yeah. We got to workshop that. I remember your question. I loved your question and hated your question at the yeah. same time <laughs> yeah. for obvious reasons. And one of the reasons why I chose it is not because I feel like we can give you this answer that's like, no. you know, this is what you're, mm-hmm. you're going to do. It's going to solve all your problems. Mm-hmm. I think that we've already said it, which is to say in those early stages, the first date, those early stages where it's like, oh, you have this belief, I have this belief. It's almost like talking about like religion or yeah. politics. It and is. if you're passionate enough about one of those topics to the point where you can't be with someone who doesn't feel the same way, let's find out now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so maybe give a little less wiggle room to those early stages of, yeah, I not, haven't really thought about it. Like, okay, yeah. it's a cop out. You know, I have thought about it. I I have my answer. So maybe get to work on that. Two things. First is, like I said, I think you're at, you are like spearheading, you know, you're, you're one of the people that can so confidently say that at a young age, you know, I think that's amazing to be that sure, like, oh, the certainty, like I, give me some of that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She's a trailblazer. Yeah. Nonprofit in Kyrgyzstan and like, I'm not having kids. In so many ways. (laughs) And, and so well-spoken. And well-spoken. I mean, I kind of want to have kids. I know. I want to have kids with (laughs) you too. Yeah. Let's have kids with her. (laughs) If it was a commune situation, I don't have any problem with that. You know what I was thinking? Um, I I have to say this and, and don't take this the wrong way. Were these relationships going really well when like this, this kid stuff kind of came up? So that's a great question because no, and Mm. it was not the kid thing. So I think one of the things that has been tricky for me to navigate is I know that there are other things that might have been fundamental incompatibilities Mm. that we just never addressed because the kids thing was on the surface. So like, like there was a pretty fundamental difference in values that became apparent over the course of my most recent relationship. And I think that there was a lot of that in the back of his mind during the breakup, but it's just easier to be like, well, you know, this is, you can't have half a kid. So we'll, we'll call it. And I don't know if that was his reasoning just to kind of simplify the breakup. This is actually also the first time that I have been broken up with. I did the breaking up all of the previous times Oh, when it became apparent that they were assuming I would change my mind. And and Um, I'm sorry to stop you there. I'm so curious when you broke up with them, (laughs) what was their reaction? Did any of them, were were they like, okay, we don't have to have kids. We'll just stay together. Yes. Uh, One of them was, I broke up with him pretty quickly right before having moved to Kyrgyzstan. And part of the breakup was like, I'm going to move, you know, we can, we can make it work long distance for a little while, or you can come with me. And he said, I will, I'll come with you. If you can tell me you're going to be ready to have kids when we come back. And I said, you know, that I won't be. And he said, okay, well then I'm going to let you go by yourself. And then when I arrived here, he started calling all the time and said, I like, I hate this. I don't know what I'm doing. I have decided it's more important to be with you than to have hypothetical future family with somebody else. Can we try our relationship again with kids fully off the table? And my response to him was, I would rather you think about whether or not you really want kids with our relationship fully off the table. Mm -hmm. Mm, And then after that, we just went no contact and it's been a couple of years. Well, it's also interesting. He's like, can we do this relationship with kids off the table? It's like, she's like, that's what I thought we were doing. We were doing that for years. (laughs) Where were you? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was four and a half years. That one. Uh. (laughs) Mm, It does kind of sound like the kids thing might be a slight red herring yeah in a way maybe it was a shortcut Mm -hmm. but this most recent one you said different values Mm -hmm. yeah and the kids was just sort of the on paper reason Mm -hmm. is it possible oh okay sorry you were about to say something 
No, I, I was thinking about uh, the fact that I think I don't interrogate people's values so deeply in the initial stages as probably I should and will going forward, because how could somebody who knows what I think is important have been committed to me for so long mm. and then reveal themselves, pull the rug out from under me as totally different minded in these fundamental ways. So hearing yourself speak about this, do you f you feel it sounds like you're answering your own question? <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm just curious. Like, it does sound like you are maybe so open to getting to know the person that you're not asserting enough of yourself. Yeah. Or, or I'm dating people who are themselves not assertive. I don't know because I do feel like I, I have a lot of, you know, highly political <laughs> opinions and a lot of things that are fundamental to who I am, including like the career path I've chosen and, a lot of the reasons that underpin my decision to be child free are also, you know, kind of core values. So when I articulate all those things and then someone says, you're great, let's keep going. Aren't, aren't they also tacitly telling me that they appreciate what I believe? Mm. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know. Yeah. I think that that's a little idealistic. Yeah. To assume that the, you're great. Well, let's see where this goes. Mm. Only because if we're talking the early stages and how exciting it is to find someone that you want to keep seeing. Yeah. It's so easy to sort of sweep under the rug the things that really do become massive problems later just because they're yeah. not, you know, well, they're not pressing. In the end, falling in love is a selfish act. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just saying it's very selfish. Like, oh, this feels good. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. doing drugs, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, you just get a little hit of it. And you're like, I want more of this. And you, you have a tendency, everybody, good people, bad people, they have a tendency early in relationship to be like, that's going to be a problem, but you know what? I'm not thinking about that because I feel so good right now. And yeah. it's not out of malice or spite. It's just the way it works. And unfortunately, I think you have to be so unbelievably crystal clear up front, like yeah. almost in a way that's not even fun. Yeah. Like just be like, I'm so serious well, right now. Like I've been hurt by this. Like almost <laughs> talk about it as if it's trauma, but, like, uh -huh. you know, like a trauma but, yeah. story. The goal yeah. is, is that the person is like you're so attuned to each other so naturally that it doesn't feel like work. Right. Mm. Like for what it's worth, Andy and I talked about religion within the first hour of meeting. That's so great. Yeah. Like That's literally so great. we had just met and like barely knew each other's age and what we did. And then it's like, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you, we knew that it was something exciting and special yeah. and it's like let's quickly get this out of the way mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i don't want this to rear its ugly right. head you know in te after 10 dates when i'm all attached right yeah. because they are Absolutely. they can be deal breakers and this is such a deal breaker this is more of a deal breaker than differing political beliefs you don't even want to yeah, waste like appetizers before you get to this yeah like just get it true. out of the way and get mm -hmm. it out strong but also People are allowed to change their minds. I think that mm. what bothers me about this is the sort of like, I haven't thought about it. You know, we'll figure yeah. it out. You know, there, this is something that has a degree of urgency for obvious reasons. So there's that. But also I respect when people change their minds and can verbalize that. And it's like, we had this arrangement and now our, this arrangement needs to change because I no longer feel that way. It's like, it's not mm. always going to be as black as and white as like, oh, I don't want kids. I don't want kids. Blah, blah, blah. We're never having kids. You know, maybe someone changes their mind. That's how the cookie crumbles. You seem like an adventurer. I mean, mm -hmm. you are, you are an adventurer. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. You went from Denver to Kyrgyzstan. I think that you don't have a biological clock working against you. I think you can sort of relax and not act impulsively, like not make mistakes based on the need to, you know, get something moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just wait, wait for mm. the right guy. Don't, don't, don't accept someone who's like, yeah, that sounds like a good call. Uh, have to think about that. Just mm. don't accept it. Just move on. You know, that's not going to work. If you want to have a fun two weeks with some guy, like just, screw around, fine. But if you're gonna be serious with somebody, say I have all the time in the world and I'm not going to-, to Waste get, it. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste it, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's I, a paradox. Yeah, having all the time in the world doesn't mean that you wanna waste that time. Yeah, you have all the time in the world, therefore you don't have to make impulsive decisions. You just take the one that's right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wait for it. 
I'm also just not worried about you. Yeah, I'm not worried either. <laughs> I'm really not worried. I'm really not worried. a little about shot in an arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, negative worried about you. No. Thank you. Part of the reason I wrote into you specifically, you know, I mean, we were in the throes of he had broken up with me, but was still living here. And really, I needed to make a therapy appointment. But I was I was thinking, oh, you know who I want to talk to about this. I, I thought it would be a Q&A, but I, I hoped that I would hear your perspective because I feel like part of the reason people really value your advice is because you've cultivated something that's so symbiotic in so many ways where you align on everything that really matters and you're very unique different people that that really grow with each other and I I'm so astounded that you found each other in such a cool way I you know I found your podcast right at the beginning so I remember (laughs) the meeting story being why I subscribed Uh and It's so lovely. And I just thought, you know, I I have also had these nice, I've never been on the apps. So all of my relationships have grown out of friendship or been some other kind of nice serendipitous meeting story. But maybe I'm just not doing what you do, which is, you know, have the skills to really articulate what you're looking for and kind of winnow the I, from the I, chaff I, I, in someone's I, personality. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this beautiful compliment, beautiful Gorgeous and articulate compliment. compliment. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was touched. really enjoying that. Like no, a meal. I'm, I like, feel very know, touched. I was a little, I'm kind yeah, of speechless. I feel a little welled up, but I will say that there was some element of luck and not mm. some, there was a big element of luck in how mm. we met and why we met. It's not just about being good at meeting mm. somebody. You also need to get a little lucky. And again, yeah you do have the clock working in your favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're going to get lucky, no question. You might, <laughs> I mean, not, you know, obviously you can get lucky anytime you want. <laughs> well, maybe but both, yeah. Yeah, you'll get very big life lucky. I, I have no doubt. We have no doubt. And just be surgical about it. Mm-hmm. Be careful. Don't don't let, a nut, even though you have so much time, don't mm-hmm. waste a minute of it. Just find the person who's like, I'm on the same page as you, 100%. You know the yeah. saying, you have to be good to be lucky. I love the, how you use the word surgical. You also mm. have to, like in this case, you have to be surgical to be lucky. Yeah. Because I think that had we not had all the life experience and all the dating experience that we had and knew so specifically what we were looking for and what mattered and what didn't, I honestly don't know if I would have known how good a thing I had was mm. right in front of me. I honestly don't know. Well, like I said, we're talking about religion an hour into our first conversation. Yeah. Mm. It's like, okay, well, we we're knew comp- right away. We knew there was something yeah. happening mm. here. It's almost like sign the paperwork. It's like when you go to close on a house, you're like, I- I'm, I'm getting this house. Just give me the paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, let's see if there's any like, you know, weird fine print. Here. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Hannah. Hannah. What, what That's a delight so nice. <laughs> Hannah from Kyrgyzstan is go. Wait, what is she? What she's I was not there. I think I was. Andy was singing away. a jingle right before she came on. Yeah, but it had her last name in it. So oh I yeah, we had sing. to cut that part. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, Hannah, I love your question. Like I said, love hate, but I'm really excited for you. I really you. am. I think that you're off doing something so cool, and like you have, like Andy said, all the time in the world. And how great to have learned those lessons already. This is going to be my new mantra, Andy. I love you have all the time in the world, so don't waste any of it. That's I love this. Never thought about it felt like that. Um, but I do feel like a lot of people regret the ending of a long relationship as a waste of time when they feel like they could have been meeting somebody with whom to start a family. Mm-hmm. And because I don't have that, I, I do have kind of like a concrete, beautiful thing that grew out of each of my past relationships, which, yeah, is is really a privilege, I think, to be able to reflect on. Hannah, thank you so much for waking up early and sharing oh. your story yeah. and allowing us to pretend to answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah from Kyrgyzstan is going to find her man. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I, what am I supposed to you say? You got the next verse. Come on. I don't know. I don't really love that ah, song. Is going to find her man. It's like she doesn't even need to find her man. She's she like, need- a, she's. Hannah from Kyrgyzstan's not going to find her man. No. Oh. Does oh. It, like could like, find oh, her man. Hannah, just- for, <laughs> Hannah from Kyrgyzstan doesn't need to find her man. But me. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? Yeah. But maybe she would. But maybe she will find a man <laughs> who's not from Kyrgyzstan, but from other some other stand. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is bad. This is a very bad song. I think you were expecting Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, no. you were expecting Kyrgyzstan to rhyme. Yeah, better. I thought that was gonna be it. It's like, oh wow, he got one line in. And yeah, now you put me. On I just the... feel like to to distill everything about Hannah down. Like she's gonna find her man. No, I'm like, that's, I'm uh... I just, I just, it was the only word yeah, I could I think know. that rhymed with, with Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> yeah. It's also yeah. affirming, you know, the the month after a breakup, you kind of wonder. So it's the I'll I'll, I'll listen to that part <laughs> on repeat later. Yeah, you can write the rest of it. Hannah, thank you so very much for for being a Shandy. And- yeah, thank oh, you. Oh man, I it's my absolute pleasure. Yeah, oh. I'm really so grateful for you both. So oh, you have a thank lifer. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you just you just wow. made our, our nights. I think you are such an interesting human. Yes. Thank you. I'm excited. You're going to do well. Okay, Hannah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you both so th- much. Have a, a nice day. I mean, it's thank you. Yeah, enjoy a, your morning. Yes. Enjoy thank your you morning. so much. Thank okay. you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Wow, what a human. Oh man, she was so striking in so many ways. She's First of all, great. she's gorgeous, she, adventurous, and she felt like an old soul to me oh, like but she you know, could have i could have we could have done this interview in 1945 and i feel like that works <laughs> yeah it's interesting how being an old soul can work for and against you absolutely because in her case she's got an older soul than a lot of the guys she's dating there are very few old souls souls are very new nowadays yeah extremely new shiny <laughs> shiny and new yeah green I feel like it is something, uh, something irked me about, I actually think the child thing, the child free thing was sort of a red herring, honestly. It wasn't really the thing. It was more like a broader discussion about how upfront to be about your beliefs and what your deal breakers are and your values right up front. If that really is going to be something, and this is not something you can be on the fence about. A choice needs to be made at some point. You can't be like politics where we just don't talk about politics in the house. But I don't know, something about all these guys being like, I haven't thought about it. Oh, like what a well-articulated thought out answer. Well, it's, it's It's, such a, it's such a man. And and look, men, I'm not maligning all men. I'm just uh saying men do certain things. And it's such a man thing to be like, I can change this. I don't even like, I really hope it's not that. In the back of their mind, they're probably just like, eh, you she'll know come what? around. I think you're right. And I also don't think it's just men. I don't want to think that it's like them trying to change her. It's like, oh, I'll wait it out. She's so great. She'll come around. Ugh, she'll come that's, around. Yeah, that's, it's not right. It's not right to steal someone's time like that, hoping for the best. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like you have nothing to lose. You're just like, I'll hope for the best. And if it doesn't work out, what's the big deal? I'll just walk. Yeah, but, you know, stealing of time, she has enabled them to steal her time. Right. If, assuming Somewhat. that really was sort of like the catalyst, which we, we still don't really know. But if it if it is a deal breaker, which it is, I think that in the first six months, especially, it's like, have you come to a conclusion? I'm not changing my mind. This is not a temporary thing. Yeah. The way it is with a lot of people, honestly, that's the thing is there are people who don't think they want kids, but then find out that they do. Sure. In, in their mid thirties, sure. you know, yeah, so that's usually when it happens. yeah. So I feel like it's really on her to lay down that law and keep checking in so that her yeah. time isn't wasted. And as you said, this is just sort of a, a did you call it a red herring? Yeah. For other deal breakers, like if you have a deal breaker, like an absolute deal breaker that, you know, is like never changing. Mm -hmm. It's in the on position. You lay that down early. Yeah. Even if it's a first date. Yeah. That's one of those things. Like sometimes you're like, oh, you don't want to talk about this stuff on a first date, but it's, you know, honestly, if you have a a red line, talk about it on a first date. For me, for me, religion. We talked about it in the first hour. Yeah. I I wasn't kidding around. Like that is not some like no. it was a it, deal breaker for me. Get religion, politics, kids. Get it out of the way on the first date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have very few second dates, but you know. No, but save yourself some time. Seriously though, you might have few second dates, but talk about quality second dates, the ones you do have. Oh yeah. There's no scary places. Yes. You can talk about anything. Yes. Make sure you like the same food too. But that's you know, that's more <laughs> gradual, I guess. <laughs> It takes a while to figure yeah, that one it takes out. Takes a while. She's gonna do well. She's gonna do well no matter what. She doesn't need a man. She's just, she's gonna be good. She's gonna be good. Yes, I love it. Wait, is there anything like good rhyme with Stan? Stan is tough. Stan is shockingly hard. Yeah. Just an and yeah, but it's very few word good words end in an. They end at an duh or ain. 
Yeah. And I was thinking, tough. yeah, like can, 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 yeah, fan, can. land. You can kind of get away with land, but not really. <laughs> All right, I think that's a wrap. That's it. I feel good about that. Yeah, I feel I feel very confident she's going to do well. Oh, I am like when I said I wasn't worried about her. Yeah. Some people they come on and I'm like, yeah. it just hasn't worked out. Yeah. What? How? How fun to date these different people from different walks of life. Uh, you found each other in Kyrgyzstan. Like so much fun. She's got like a, She's like a James Bond. It's yeah. Like she's just such an exciting life ahead of her. Yes, totally. All right. All right. So not worried. A lot of ass kissing going on here. <laughs> Is ass kissing rhyme with Stan? <laughs> no. Okay, if you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Ratings and reviews, tell your friends, and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye.